Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome to Dealcasters, musician, podcaster, Amazon live streamer, and of course, the market development specialist for sure. Please welcome Mario Ponce. Hey, what's up, guys? That's such a great name. I feel like when I introduced you, I felt like uh, Bruce Buffer in the middle of the, of the, the, the you know, please welcome Mario Ponce. It just was... It, it's, it probably sounds great in an arena. Oh, I'm sure it does. <laughs> It'd be great to hear it in an arena one day, but uh, you never know. One uh, day. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for having me. Uh, super excited to be here. Wow, I'm on Dealcaster, so <laughs> thank you so much. Um, and you mentioned my neon sign. Whoop, other finger. There you go. You nice. love that sign, huh? That uh, is so awesome. I think, from yeah. from our events team, so I appreciate their... I have sign envy Generous. right now with that <laughs> uh, with that sure logo sign uh, behind you, and so sign, yeah, sign FOMO, sign FOMO. I then. have R two D two envy. Okay, so uh, that's yeah. I don't think it gets better than that. Um, and brick wall envy <laughs> on the other <laughs> side. <laughs> but R two D two, yeah, dude, look at that. What kind of guitar is that above the in the back there? Above R two, yeah. That is a Waterstone TP12. It's a 12-string bass. Uh, it's uh, Tom Peterson from Cheap Trick. That's his. Uh, that's his company. Um, wow. So yeah, that's a that's a 12-string uh, nice. bass. Yeah, it's awesome, uh, man. It's it it definitely takes a while to get your fingers used to getting around that. Um, right. And so this is a great segue because you started yeah. talking about guitars and. And here we are, you know, uh, speaking to, uh, you know, a member of one of the biggest audio companies, sound companies in the world right here uh, in Shure. And we immediately start talking about uh, backdrops and lights and, and, <laughs> right. and everything like that. But, um, you know, you are a musician and I, I would love yes. to sort of start digging into that because I think what a lot of people might think uh, when when they look at uh, you know, sound companies is that maybe someone was just hired because of their business acumen. Mm. I'm not saying you don't have business acumen, right? right. Um, but having a passion and an affinity for sound and for music and sort of understanding what goes in the bag for musicians and for podcasters and for live streamers is important. So I'd love to maybe even hear how, about how you started in yeah. sound and uh, how that got to where you're at now. Absolutely. So, um, I've been a musician my entire life. So since a wee wee lad, I've played drums, bass, guitar, been in bands throughout the 90s. Um, you know, thought I was going to be a rock star at one point, but still play music to this day. Um, you know, a lot of different projects. Um, so, you know, my musical uh, adventures started very, very young. So I was very familiar with the brand. You know, always had an SM57 lying around. Um, always did home recording. So I know a, um, a lot of people out there who, um, you know, don't have a professional audio degree or they're not an engineer. They're a little intimidated by um, some of those concepts. Um, and I'm one of those people. Uh, I was a DIY guy through and through, experimenting with different stuff reading as much as I could and trying to learn the most I can about making my recordings the best I can. And we're talking about recording on one of those little four track cassette oh, yeah. players, uh, you know, and then uh, digital comes in and then you have Pro Tools and then you have GarageBand and all the way to recording stuff on your phone. So things have really progressed. I'm one of those people who started with a four track cassette player trying to get the most out of my, um, out of my gear. Uh, so that's kind of my musical background. Like I said, still play music, um, to this day, uh, especially with my son. He's a musician as well. So being able to enjoy that thing together. So yeah. And your um, son, your son, if I remember correctly, is a drummer, right? He is, uh, an everything musician. Okay. Um, he plays drums, uh, but he also plays guitar. He's, uh, I'm in Southern California. I'm in San Diego County and he's active in the noise, uh, punk scene, hardcore mm -hmm. scene. I guess you would call it out here in the, or down here in the Southern California. So 
his main thing is right now is guitar and, and vocals. Oh, okay. Uh, but he does play drums. He's an amazing drummer. He's a uh, amazing multi instrumentalist. And I love so. the fact that you that you do that with your son. That you guys have that that you can do together. It's it's yeah, like yeah. you know you know being a musician myself, and you know there's that moment where your your son at first walks over and points at your jazz bass and goes, "Can I play <laughs> that?" And you're like, "Oh, you know, you're just all <laughs> you know." And then they lose interest, and then they hate you. Um, <laughs> and, you know. <laughs> And then they love you again and they'll never play music. But you actually have, yeah. you know, uh, you know, a son that you can play. Now, you may not agree with all of his musical choices. That's okay. Everybody's got different, you know, types yeah. of music. You know, it, right. it sounds to me right. like you may not be a hardcore fan, but you're a fan of your son. So that matters, right? Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm pretty open-minded. He's turned me on to a lot of music and... um you're right. It's like, can I play that ba bass, Dad? At first, it's like, whoa, hold on, and then <laughs> now it's like, well, it's all, what's mine is his. So, um, it's been, uh, yeah, it's amazing. Um, we do like a lot of this of similar music. He always turns me on to different types of stuff. But that's awesome. Yeah, very fortunate being able to share that with him. So, uh, yeah, very, very, very yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. And so. Being in bands and like, I, I'm so tempted to go into my closet where I've got a four track because I was back there cleaning, <laughs> cleaning it out. And I had, I had this four track and I pulled it out and I was, I was very tempted to just toss it. And I thought, nah. And of course there's a tape in there. Right. So I'm like, I wonder what I've recorded on this thing. Right. Yeah. Um, of course, you know, all of the uh, people that are uh, 20 years and younger are all tuning <laughs> out at this point. Um, but I think when you go through those kinds of processes, you, you can apply that to future technology. And of course, I always would go back and go, well, I remember there wasn't a free garage band. I had to buy Cakewalk and they sent me 54 floppy disks that I had to load into my right. Commodore 64 computer. Get off my lawn. Right. And, you know, but I always thought to myself, if I had that kind of technology back then, wow, what what could I do? You know, I'd be the mm. next Trent Reznor or mm. or whatever. If it just doesn't work like that, people are are being able. To, you just got to work with what you're given for the you know for the present technology. But one of the things that I really love about um, Shure microphones is you brought up the 58 and you brought up mm. the 57, mm. and you there's just as like. These are to say it's iconic or to say it's the industry standard just doesn't even give it <laughs> like enough justice, you know, especially the the SM58, which I know has an amazing, amazing history. But every stage you walk into, every club for the most part, you walk into, uh, I know every band that I was ever in, the singer would always have their own microphone because you don't want to go into a club and use some spit ridden yeah. 58 that somebody else was, you know. Who knows where that thing has been, right? Right. Um, but they always had their own SM58. They always traveled with it. They always traveled, mm. you know, they had their own bag, you know, that they, yeah. that, they, that they stuck that thing in. And why do you think it has just stood, you know, and the 57 as well is a great uh, audio microphone for vocals, but all, you know, a lot of people use them for drums and guitar amps and, mm. and things like that in, in studios. Why do you think they've uh, stood the test of time so well? That's a great question. Um, you know, in my personal experience, um, so when I started with Shure, I knew that, you know, 58, 57, and I've used a lot of 58s, 57s in like rehearsal rooms, you know, where, like you said, they're pretty beat up and stuff. And I knew because of that experience that a 58, you know, is a quality product. And I think um, the thing that resonates with people when they see a 58, they try a 58, they use it, is the quality that goes into a product like that. And that's something that from top down, sure, is very, very proud of is this quality assurance that you're getting the best that we have to offer. So I, I think that's at the top of the list. Not, Of course, it sounds great. It cuts down on feedback. It's a groundbreaking cardioid polar pattern, all that stuff. But I think at the end of the day, it's it's something that is the quality that goes into something like that. There's passion, I, I think you would say is the right word, that goes into a product like that. And whether it's a microphone or it's a guitar or it's a drum set and it's your favorite one and you get to play it or you you, you know you hear it 
um, you know, you, you hear how the bass sounds, your favorite bass or your favorite guitar, you know, it's, you know that there's love and passion that went into that product, whatever it is. And I like to think of a microphone as an instrument, because if you're a singer, that's your instrument, right? Most people or a lot of singers that I talk to, their microphone is their instrument. So I think there's, you could sense there's a lot of passion that goes into that. And like I said, it's the same thing with any of your favorite types of instruments. You know, like for me, I have a Moog synthesizer. Oh, I love it. And when I play it, I could tell that there's a lot of thought and a lot of love that went into creating this thing. And I think that's what resonates with people when they get on a 58 or they hear it somewhere or they actually get to experience it for themselves. You know, Mario, we did a show. um, I want to say it was three weeks ago. And I don't know what got into me. But I was, it was talk. I was, I was just going on and on and on about how awesome this mic is and how I believe it's an underrated podcast mic. And not a lot of people realize that this right. thing is so great. And I'm sitting here talking about it and I just decided I would do this. Uh, and I don't know if I was the first person to ever do this on, on Amazon. I'd like to think I was, but I actually unscrewed it and pulled it apart. Okay. You actually like, pulled it apart. Like, yeah. I just, I, just apart? Like, I was like, has anyone ever apart? done this? Uh, you know, oh. has, you know, has anyone ever done this live on Amazon? It's like, why would you, why would you want to do this? Right. But I think, I think it just, to me, I have had these microphones in my hand has, have sung into them, have had singers, you know, when people say drop the mic, you can literally drop this mic and it's a tank. It, you, yeah. it, it just, it stand. there's, so much that this can withstand. Right. And so I just think I, I was just, maybe that was just the demo person in me just saying, hey, you know, I want to, I just want to show, I can just unscrew this thing and I can pop this thing back in and I can yeah. do, you know, have you ever seen this kind of stuff? And, you know, just realize this thing is, is solid as a rock and is, you know, obviously it's an XLR uh, microphone. And so I think maybe we can talk a lot. I know we're jumping around a little bit and I want to get yeah. back into uh, how you you got from being a musician to uh, you got careers at other uh, companies that we're not, we're not going to tease too much on, on, on that. But uh, these are some, some interesting companies that you worked at before you got to mm-hmm. Shure. But let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, a standard XLR, a cable microphone versus a USB microphone. And I think you know, maybe some some use case scenarios for uh, for some of the folks that are watching uh, and yeah. and listening for that. Yeah, you know, um, okay. So USB mics, I get this question a lot about uh, is there a difference in sound? Um, obviously, there's going to be a difference in sound, but I think it all depends on your setup, on what you're trying to achieve in your live stream or in your content or whatever it is you're trying to do. Um, so. For example, um, I always, so I go live every week on Amazon. I use an MV7 and I use an XLR or excuse me, I use it USB. And the reason why is because within my day, uh, within my um, position at Shure, I'm doing a bunch of different things. Amazon Live is one of them. So I need something that's going to be easy to use, something that's kind of quick and something that doesn't need a lot of setup. So i Use USB, pop it right into my laptop, assign, I use OBS to, you know, MV7. It, usually USB mics come with some sort of software suite that acts as your interface. So that does all of the audio configuration for you. Um, and that is why I always gravitate towards USB. Now, if I had a little bit more time, um, I could put it into my mixer, use XLR, I could do my own treatments, I can do my own compression, my own EQs outside of a software suite. That's where USB comes in. So it all depends on your all your knowledge of audio, what you have at your disposal, what you're willing to use as a setup. There's a lot of these factors that come into play because um, they're both great. It just depends on your application. So when you talk about difference in sound, I would say that there is a difference in sound. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to think that the analog uh, um, the piece about this is a little bit more warmer. 
um, more natural, I think. Um, but again, it all depends on the mic you're using. It all depends on your interface. It depends on the mixer that you're using, but it also depends on your situation. And I think that's the one thing that's way, way important here is the fact that you're using what you need to make things easier for you. And uh, that's why I think USB microphones are um, have taken off in the last, oh gosh, well, let's say 10 years. Maybe in the last five years, they've really taken off. And it's because everyone knows USB, right? Flash drives, remember flash drive? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, you have uh, little flash sticks. Um, you're, you're connecting your you know, USB to your printer, right? So, of course, the next logical thing would be to use it for audio, use it for instruments and whatnot. So I think a lot of people gravitated towards it because of that simple ease of use factor. Um, but if you had the means, if you had the equipment and the gear, I think XLR is, is probably going to sound the warmest and more natural for you. Well, and, and I think that's a great point. I think what we see a lot is a lot of the people, like maybe some of the people watching this show or listening live or on replay, or they're just getting started out. And right, a lot of times when people first start, like say, with even with a Zoom, mm. they're using the microphone that's built into their computer and they don't understand the difference. So then they're like, oh, well, you mean I got to plug a microphone in? Right. And so the USB to your point is easy because they just slide it in the computer. But then when you start saying, oh, well, if you get an interface... I think it's a little bit of uh, technology, uh, you know, fear, uh, right? And that's why we say don't fear the gear. We kind of help people walk through right. that. Uh, because I started out with USB, but yep. as I got more confident and understood how I could control my audio better by having an interface, you know, right. I almost am afraid to not go with, you know, without an interface because I'm right. like, you know, it really does, to me, it makes a difference. And when you have a friend like, Chris Stone, that is an audiophile, he, uh, <laughs> he'll be like, oh my gosh, you're using a USB microphone, aren't you? What did you call me? <laughs> it, it, it does make a difference. I mean, it absolutely does. Um, but like I said, I mean, I, I, have, I use USB for live streams just because of convenience factor for me. Yeah. Uh, however, last week I did a stream where I used an SM58 um, for my stream. Um, and I used an interface. Uh, but still, that interface is going digital into my laptop. So, right. you know, at the end of the day, it's like, it's, yeah, I'm using it US or XLR, but at some point down the chain, I had to convert that. So, yeah, that's true. So, you guys, um, it, that's another thing. And I don't know if we have this in the carousel or if it is uh, on sale for the holiday spirit or the holiday season. And that is the, uh, is it M the MVI? Yeah, this guy right yes. here. So oh, yeah. yeah, that is a powerful little interface. Um, and so if you do have an XLR microphone, that is something that you can plug into your computer, pop that traditional mic uh, cable in there. Um, Mario, is there anything yeah. that you uh, want to share as it relates to the, uh, to the MVI? I don't have one uh, handy right now. Yeah, uh, MVI, it's either quarter inch or XLR adapter. So you can plug an instrument or a guitar if you wanted to. Mm. It is micro USB to USB. USB C. It's got headphone monitoring directly on the product. If you look at the front, it's got five DSP presets. So if you don't know a lot about audio, you plug a mic into here or an instrument and you want to get the right audio, you've got five little presets here um, for speech, for um, interviewing, for instrument, for recording a band, or if you could just if you just want it flat. You also have um, gain control on the front here. But the most interesting thing about this is that it has phantom power. So uh -huh. you could put any condenser microphone in here and you could power that microphone with the phantom power. It, it, you can even, it'll run a cloud lifter or a gain lifter. So if you wanted to plug an SM7B with a gain lifter using phantom power in a simple setup, this is, uh, this is a great solution. Yeah, Oops, wow. that's great. And I, yeah. I love the the fact as well is it's so small. And so that's, I think that's the other thing in, in terms of ease of use, uh, depending on whatever your use case is. I mean, for instance, you know, a lot of people are out traveling back out in conferences. You were just at TwitchCon, which I would love to hear right. about as well. And yeah. that is one of those things where it's like, when you're someone, when you're a content creator, it's like, 
you know, okay, I'm going to, you know, I've got all these new gadgets and, you know, I'm going to get my gimbal in there and my camera and this mic and that mic. And, and, right. uh, you know, I can't really put my, you know, and then you start looking at everything and you're like, man, I got to go simple here. I got to go yeah. uh, really, you know, and so I think that's why a lot of people will choose USB microphones. But if you're in a situation where you need multiple microphones, you can't mm. plug uh, multiple USB microphones into the same computer and be able to use them. And so I think a yeah. lot of people have run into that situation. Like I have this USB mic and I've got another USB mic. How come I can't use them on the same computer? Well, that right. you know, your, your computer is not going to, it's not going to be able to work. Uh, it's going to use right. one of those audio sources. So that's where the interface comes in. And I know that's a solo interface, but it's, it's also like a really great way to say, well, I have a really solid XLR microphone and all yeah. I got to do is bring a short microphone cable and that MV1. Is it MV1 or MVI? MVI. MVI. Oh, MVI, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great... Uh, I use it all the time. Uh, my son uses this into his phone and records on BandLab. Uh, wow. So it's got an or a garage band. Um, so you can use it with, with a phone. However, you do need to buy and I don't have the cable. Oh, but we have a cable, cable or okay. Um that you can buy um and it has a lightning. It's micro USB uh, to lightning, but you want to buy our version because it's certified to work with the iPhone. So right, and then you it. have an app too that you could download for this for the iPhone only. Huh. And the app has like gain, it's got compression, it's got EQ, but it also has a 20 dB lift. So if you needed that extra gain lift, the mm. app actually has that too. So, nice. but the most important thing is is if you're going to use it with a phone, that you buy the cable that we offer because it's kind of made for iPhone. Wow, that's that's pretty uh, that's pretty slick. And I I will tell you one of the things. Wait, right, talking more like about the USB mics. I think the fact that you guys have come out with the Motive, you know, apps, right? The family of mm. apps there. Mm really helps people be able to control their microphones. Like, uh, I think Chris, uh, yeah, Chris might be, has got this here. But like with the uh, the MV7 or the White Noir MV7 that was, you know, available only here on Amazon, which uh, right. which we've been able to use before, you could control everything through the app where as opposed to, uh, you know, I'm using the MV7X and everything's got to be done through my interface because it doesn't, right. uh, it's just an XLR microphone. Chris looked like he was about right to say right. something. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is doing some, some technical stuff, but yeah, I think, uh, you know, but I had no idea yeah. about that, that iPhone thing. That that's pretty interesting, especially with people doing like social audio, whether it's on Twitter spaces or maybe they're using, uh, you know, LinkedIn audio as yeah. well that, you know, to actually be able to put their microphone into their phone could be something that uh, people might want to do because they want to they want to sound better. Yeah. And this app here that you're showing is the desktop app for the MV7. So it's got a bunch of different things um, that are specific to this microphone. If you wanted to use your MV7 on an iPhone uh, or a cell phone, you could. Uh, you would just need to get that cable for iPhone that we were talking about. But this app, you could download it for free, iOS or Android, on the app stores. And it's the same exact app. So you can actually use an MV7 on your phone if you really wanted to. And you guys can hear me right now? We can hear yes, you, Chris. We can. Okay. So, now, so what you're hearing right now, I'm speaking into the uh, Shure MV7, uh, Amazon exclusive, White Noir. Grab it while it's white hot. And uh, so, yeah, this, so now you're going to be able to hear sort of the differences. And I've, I've got this already on, a, on a, uh, a preset. A lot of these functions are on the mic itself. So um, if you've got, here, I've got an MV7. I could pull and do an overhead, Jim. But if you've got um, an MV7 handy. I do. Let me add this here. And that way we can kind of see this. So all of these functions are are on the mic itself. And this is not tactile, meaning you're not gonna it's not gonna add extra sound into your broadcast, which I thought was really well done. So if you want to slide any gain 
do any muting yeah. or anything on the mic itself. It's not, you know, it's, you're not going to create any crazy vibrations right. uh, onto your broadcast. You can just kind of slide your finger. Um, there's, you know, if you want to hold down the sides here, you can, you know, unmute, unmute yourself. Uh, there's all kinds of really, um, really cool functions on the mic itself. But if you've got this Sure Plus Motive app up, and you can adjust your gain. So right now, if I if I want to, you're probably hearing me get a little bit louder. But it, mm-hmm. as I can I can drag it down if I'm clipping or anything like that. But it does have um, a limiter here as well. You you know, in terms of gain and and audio, obviously, you know, you you never want uh, you never want to clip. So you're having a limiter on is probably not a bad idea. Um, you, yeah. you never know. Um, and of course you can add, you know, three different levels of, of compression, uh, to your voice and you're probably hearing my voice change a little bit. I like this, this presence boost right here. Some of the, uh, those, those upper mids here, but you can, you can start flat and kind of go from there. Or if you want to get something where you can probably hear a really high presence boost, mm. uh, right here, if you want to adjust uh, what you're hearing uh, of your mic versus your playback uh, right here. You can do that. I'm, I just stopped hearing myself there for a second. Um, <laughs> and then here is these live meters. And I showed this earlier where you have, um, you have lights that are going on um, that are live based on the sound that's coming into the microphone. And you can turn on light mode, which just sort of dims those, uh, those lights and, um, you know, the other cool thing is, you know, I have, I have this, I saved a preset. This is the preset that I like. I call it Oreo cookie. Cause this is the one that I, <laughs> I, I use for my, my white noir and everybody says it looks like an Oreo cookie. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Um, by the way, Mario, yeah. um, I've had a number of people cause we've, we've done these videos for, uh, for the white, white noir and for the yeah. MV7, MV7 X on, on uh-huh. and we put them up on YouTube as well as, you know, the ones up on Amazon. Yeah. And we get this question all the time. And that is, um, are there, is there going to be a white noir MV7 X and is Ooh-oh. there going to be a white SM7B? <laughs> So uh, the answer is no. We we have no plans to uh, do any colors to MV7X. Um, however, you never know. Um, SM7B is a little bit tricky to do colors with. So we do have a company that we work with called Colorware. Right. And Colorware will actually uh, customize your MV7 um, if you wanted to. So... Um, I don't know if they do MV7X. That's a great question. But um, MV7, and then you can also do an SM58, um, but not an SM7B. It's a little bit more complicated to take this thing apart mm. um, and you know paint it and or or whatnot. But you know, we that is a question that you got a lot. I get it all the time. You said we were at TwitchCon. Uh, mm-hmm. I got it. All day long at TwitchCon, so it's something that we definitely is on our radar. We're looking at closely, so stay tuned there. Um, but if you do want some immediate color to your MV7, I think Colorware would be the place to go. Very so. cool. And then the one other thing with this Sure Plus Motive app, which also works with other microphones, like, and we're going to talk about the MV88, which we have here as well, is that if you click over here to Auto Levels. If you're not someone that wants to get in the weeds uh, with, you know, EQ and compression and all of that kind of stuff, um, you know, I, it, it's not like it's super complicated, but there are some auto levels here where if, you know, like I'm speaking near to the microphone, Mario, you're a little bit further away. Mm. So my guess is you have, you've clicked over here on far. I am on far mode. Yeah. Okay. And and so here's the difference. I am I'm near right now and it's probably you're probably going to hear a lot of gain when I hit yeah. far and start talking. And so now you oh, can, yeah. now I'm louder, right? And yes, so you are. So now if I'm back here, you know, maybe a fist length away, um yeah. I'm still getting high quality um, you know, but then as it, you know, you got to you can't eat the mic at this point because you're going to take some people's faces off. So hopefully right. you've got a you got a limiter on. Yeah. Um you could be six to eighteen inches away in far mode. Oh, uh, yeah. I use far mode all the time. Far. My jam is exactly what you're showing. Uh, far and natural oh, is okay. my go-to. Um, one because I'll sound consistent every time. Number two, 
I'm doing things like showing microphones mm-hmm. and demonstrating and I need my hands free. Yeah. So being able to be away from the microphone um, really helps. Um, and far mode is really popular for those who don't want the microphone in your shot if you're doing a video. Um, and if you're a gamer and yeah. you're streaming on Twitch or something and you need your hands free because you're on your controller or you're on your keyboard, um, far, mo- far mode does a great job for you. So uh, I use far mode. My, like I said, my jam is far and natural. And that's what I use for all my, my jam strings. is far and natural. That should be a t-shirt or a bumper <laughs> sticker, or maybe the next neon <laughs> sign behind you. Right? That's amazing. But uh, <laughs> you know, I never even thought about that far mode being really good for an Amazon influencer who's demonstrating mm. products, mm-hmm. right? Or if you're an educator and yeah. you're teaching stuff, uh, it could be your music teacher, it could be anything, any educator. Um, and you are worried about like, do I need to get close to the mic? Can they hear me? <laughs> right. Far mode's going to handle all of that for you. So, and, and see, that's that's something I guess I had never thought about from a use case. Is that's a reason to to go with the USB because you can't use this app with XLR. You cannot. You're and, correct. Yeah. So that's so. Uh, yep. I mean, that's another thing. Like I said, USBs usually have their own audio suite. Um, in some way, the Sure Plus Motive app is ours. And um, if it doesn't work for you, maybe you can configure your own audio within your interface that works for you. Um, but I just happen to find that far mode is exactly what I need. Well, it so. makes it easy because you're you've got it preset, right? If I'm going to do that on an interface, I'm gonna have to really be aware of things and I've I've got to do a lot more, you know probably be playing with gain and, and things of that nature to get it right to get it just right so that that's yeah. uh you know people want it easy right i think that's that's one of the yeah. things for probably the majority the, of users to, that's so true and the other thing too is we're doing our streams in imperfect rooms right we're doing yeah. them in bedrooms offices yeah there's no treated walls maybe you're doing your stream in your office and then tomorrow you're going to do it in a basement or you know so Things like near far mode, being able to have auto level will handle all the audio for you. So you get a consistent sound wherever you're going to be doing your stream. And that's a lot of the hurdle and a lot of the roadblock is I can hear everything with my microphone, no matter where I tried the closet, I tried bathroom, the bedroom, (laughs) the garage. So having something like that really solves those problems for you. So that's, um, and again, it's my go-to just because I'm doing a lot of different things throughout the day. And when it comes time to do the stream, I know that I'm going to be consistent with my microphone and with the way it's going to sound. It's so important. Audio is so, so important on video. And I think a lot of people, they first go for the R2-D2s and neon signs and and uh, mirrorless cameras and mm. And all of those, uh, you know, amazing things. And then uh, their audio, you know, it's, you can hear fans and they're in big, bright, untreated rooms. And, you know, you, you can't sound treat everything, but I think that's why a lot of people are, are sort of, you know, MV7 seems to be the microphone that everyone's going towards because it solves those issues in a lot of, uh, situations where it's like, all I had to do is plug this thing in. And I immediately mm-hmm. sounded better and I immediately closed the sale and I immediately like things just started happening better. But I think, you know, Jim and I are every day we're, we're remote broadcasting somebody else's show where, right. you know, we have, we have clients that we're in. It just amazes me that there are so many people that show up and they don't have their act together um, sound wise, mm-hmm. and they're just showing up with their laptops. And, um, you know, not a lot of people understand that the microphone that comes in a laptop was not made for this. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely is not it's made true. for this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, audio is half of the quality of your stream. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can get a great camera, you can get lights, you can look really well, but Audio is the other piece to that puzzle. And, um, you know, sometimes it's not easy. Um, You know, sometimes you feel like you have to have more knowledge. 
do I go condenser? Do I go dynamic? I didn't even know there was a dynamic microphone and condenser. I didn't even know there was a difference. So there's so many different things that come into play. And um, audio is is um, definitely a huge part of a piece of that puzzle. Yeah, we, we always say too, a lot of times, the most important thing in video is the audio because <laughs> I'll forgive your your camera and other things, but if you sound bad, I'm, you know... It, it for some people, uh, it, it really they, I mean, even mentally, bad sound will drive them. You know, like I can't take this anymore, and they've right. got to, they're 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 going to punch out, and they're not going to come back. So yeah, you know, spend that money on a on a great microphone, uh, like the microphone options you have with Sure. And I think that's the other thing is people got to look at this not so much like oh, but look how much it costs. It's like this is an investment. You know, my right. brother has had his Shure microphone since he was 17 and he's in his 40s. He's got a 57, right, Jim? Yes, yeah. 57. And he loves it, awesome, right? Awesome, Mike. It, it takes a licking, keeps on ticking. And, and so yeah. if you consider that these are going to last you a while, yeah. um, you know, you, you just just don't go get Starbucks for a couple months and you can afford it. <laughs> It's, you know, the other crazy thing too, and Mario, I'd love to kind of get back into your story and, and the companies you work for did before you sure. got to Shure, but like, sure. is, it, is it me or is it like the SM, SM7B, obviously, mm-hmm. uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, like th- th- these don't go on sale that often. And I understand <laughs> that not everybody I has never. the budget. <laughs> yeah. Not everyone has the budget for an SM7B and I get it. But if there was ever a time you were kind of thinking about it and you were putting together your nickels and your pennies and ready to to do it, it's time because this puppy's on sale. And, uh, yeah. you know, that's if, if it weren't for that thing right here in front of my face, um, you know, <laughs> Jim wouldn't allow me on this uh, on this live stream. But I think a lot of it. Do you think a lot of it, too, is, boy, they just saw a bunch of, you know, big name podcasters with that mic in front of them? And they were like, well, if that's Joe Rogan's mic, then that has to be my mic. Do you think some right. people have that mentality? Oh, uh, absolutely. It's <laughs> like, uh, you know, I mean, it's with anything. You mm-hmm. know, you 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 see someone with a car you want or you your favorite basketball players wearing these shoes that you want. You know, I mean, it's like the thing with the SM7B, though, is um, it's gained popularity a lot of popularity within the last, I would say, three to four years that it's really come into its own. Um, I think a lot of people have seen it, but I think when podcasting and content creation really sort of exploded, um, like in the, I don't know, like 2018, 2017 um, arena or uh, time frame, that the SM7B really started to come into its own. Um, but just because you buy an SM7B, there's a lot that goes into making this microphone sound the way that it should. I get mm-hmm. a lot of people, I got an SM7B and man, I have to crank the volume up like super, super high and everything's hissy. And, and it's because this microphone was born out of the broadcast world. So it's designed to give you that warm broadcast uh, voice, but it's actually been around for about 20 years. So there's some some classic architecture that's built into this thing. So um, you have to have a little bit of audio sort of know-how to really get it the way the sound to sound that yours sound, and that has to do with you know gain lifting, cloud lifting, or if your interface has enough gain. And the reason why it needs more gain is because the mic element is back here. And this is sort of a cage surrounding the mic element that's embedded here. So it needs a little bit more gain in order for you, for it to pick up your voice. And that's what gives you like that really nice, deep broadcast voice. So Mm -hmm. in order to do that, you need a gain lifter. And in order to get a gain lifter to work, you need phantom power. So there's, there's a lot of technical know how, not a lot, but a little bit of understanding dynamic condenser. Phantom power, then dy- why dynamics are so uh, well for content creation and all that stuff because condenser microphones are te- technically a little bit more sensitive. They require phantom power, which is an electric charge to activate all the circuitry. So you get like a, they're designed for like the studio. So if you had like 
acoustically treated rooms, having a condenser mic would be great on your your mic cab or your bass cabinet. Um, but when you're in your room and you can pick up everything, a dynamic microphone is probably a little bit better because it doesn't require a electric charge in order for it to work. However, if you want to connect your a gain lifter to your SM7B, the gain lifter itself requires phantom power. So right. it's like there's like a caveat there. Um, and, you know, I get that question a lot. Why doesn't my SM7B sound the way that I hear everyone else's? <laughs> and it's because, well, you what are you using? What kind of interface? Where's your gain at? You may want to look into getting a gain lifter. And if you do, just make sure that you have phantom power to to run it. So a yeah. little bit longer conversation. Yeah. But once you get it working, you can't beat it. I uh, mean, yeah. it's... But it's, I think from what I yeah. from what I understand though, Mario, with the new Roadcaster uh, Pro Two, you actually can use the SM7B without the cloud lifter. Is that correct? So you, yes, and there are a lot of interfaces out there that will provide the right amount of gain to run an SM7B. Um, so again, it's preference, especially if you go down the road of your interface. You really, really want to do your research. If you have an SM7 beyond on like what the gain levels are, if it's got phantom power, if the gain's not hot enough. Um, but I have heard of interfaces that are on the market that um, yep. run or that have enough gain to run an SM7B. There is. And and so the the Focusrite uh Vocaster one, which we also have in the uh in the carousel, that is another one that provides enough gain for uh for an SM7B. I've tested that out uh as well. Uh there's a video on Amazon that we've that we've put up and and on YouTube as well. That's um kind of testing amazing through that. Interface. And so um I think what a lot of people don't understand is that like you mentioned the cloud lifter and there's, you know, they call it a FET head. These are right. preamps basically. And so um, I, I think there's a, there's a number of interfaces that we didn't mention that say that they can um, provide enough gain for, uh, for SM7B. And by the way, I didn't know that the, the reason was the distance. Um, yeah. That was that, I just thought it was, had something to do with, you know, the circuitry or, or, Whatever, but it technically has to do with the distance the, that it needs to travel, which I, I've, man, I, you know, this, <laughs> this is what I love about podcasting. You can learn something every time, every time you go. But, um, you also need to be careful too with preamps that aren't that great. Now we talked about focus, right? And I think if I'm, if I'm being honest, some of, if not the best preamps in an interface personally that I, think and that means that they they sound great but they're not noisy so when you crank mm. them when they get cranked up you don't hear any you don't hear this this kind yeah. of like this thing heated up um and so Focusrite makes great uh preamps and and of course the the cloud lifter stuff is has been known for years to just like if you're getting an sm7b you gotta get a cloud lifter or some <laughs> other fet or whatever yeah but there are some interfaces that are rolling out that are saying they have enough gain for an sm7b i just i would just right. be you might want to test through some of that stuff to make sure that it, that it still sounds uh, the best way that it that it can. It's sort of like you know, like making sure that you're putting 92 octane in a car that needs 92 octane gas or something like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like you you got to make sure that it's running properly, or it just is. Right. You know, what's the point? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, but I mean, like I said, it's been around for gosh, twenty some odd years, I think. Awesome. And it, it is. You know, the, it's the industry standard. You see it everywhere. Um, and everyone that I know that has one is super happy with it. And like you said, they don't go on discount That's often. Right. So if you're looking to up your game, your audio game, uh, now may be the time to do it for sure. Now, Mario, you, it, you were a musician for years, and you had you used Shure microphones in, in your in your journey as a, as a, you know as a content creator because musicians yeah. are content creators. Yep. Um, and then you found your way into the business world as it relates to uh, to what you were doing. Where your next step was Nintendo, right? I did. I worked for I worked at Nintendo for about five years. Um, I was a district supervisor i think they called it so i had a team of like merchandising training sort of brand advocate 
uh, members and uh, got Mario's face out there. Not this <laughs> Mario, but the other Mario. <laughs> How many times oh, did yeah, they make you the master for Mario? <laughs> You can imagine what it would be, what it was, what it was like to be named Mario working at Nintendo. <laughs> right. Exactly, exactly what you thought, uh, what you you're probably thinking. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I did that, and then um, I uh, wanted to get more into the audio side of things. Uh. So um, an opportunity at Bose came up, so I moved over to Bose. I was there for about nine years. I had a lot of different titles there. I was district manager. I was a regional uh, advocate manager. Um, I was a sell-through manager. And then um, sure came knocking and uh, made me an offer I couldn't refuse. So yeah. So here I am. So a lot of CEs uh, sort of experience, um, a lot of brick and mortar retail experience. Um, so that, yeah, it's... <laughs> A lot of doors, a lot of, I've been in probably every GameStop, Walmart, Best <laughs> Buy, Target, Costco, from here to Maine. Wow. I think. That's yeah. amazing. So, you know, working at Bose, you know, the, the, that company is known for headphones. I mean, speakers, Correct. headphones, yep. right, is yep. mostly what, they know, what they're known for. And until, you know... I don't know, a number of years ago, I don't know how many years ago, um, I was just not that familiar that Shure had made headphones. You know, I had Sennheiser headphones, I had Sony headphones, I have, I have Audio-Technica headphones, and um, all of a sudden I saw these in-ear monitors uh, that were made by Shure. Yeah. And I thought, well, that's a brand I can trust. And they right. were on sale on Amazon of all places. And I bought a wireless pair of in-ear uh, monitors uh, for that, just based on doing the research that we all do, right? Right, yep. And was pleasantly surprised by that because Jim and I for years had used, you know, the cans over the mm -hmm. ears, right? And yep. for a functional, you know, situation... You know, you don't want sound coming out of your headphones and going into your into your microphone right. and causing that slapback uh, echo delay. And so, you know, a lot of people will wear the cans still, but you know, Jim and I were kind of like, you know, we got we want to keep things a little more clean or whatever. And I started using these yeah. things, and I was like, Jim, you got to get yourself a pair of those. And so I had the wireless ones, and Jim got the wired two fifteens, mm -hmm. and um. I don't, I mean, we have told, I don't know how many people, Mario, about these because everyone's just like, how come you guys don't wear headphones? Yeah. Uh, you guys talk about, you know, <laughs> how come I have to come on your show wearing headphones? And I'm like, we do wear headphones, right. see? Yeah. And they're like, oh, now of course, yeah. Now, do you have the purple ones in as well? I do. Yeah. I have the 215 special edition. Yes. Yeah. There we go. So, there we go. Yeah. So that's, that's the segue for, for the 215s, which, now, this was something that what, you guys put this up for a vote, right? For the next we color. did, yeah. So I can just pull this one out so you can get a closer look at it. Dang. So that's the purple, that color there. Um, and we, I think it was last, I think it was a year ago, like mm -hmm. last November or October of 21, we put out five colors and we asked our audience if we were to make a 215 in one of these which ones would you want and they chose the purple so it's a special edition it's here to stay so it's not limited or anything but um, it was a color chosen by um, all of you guys all, all of our fans so we were super excited to do something like this um, and it was a, a really cool idea and it just, it just, you know, catapulted into this really cool um, voting system that we did. And then, boom, you have the purple uh, SC215. So now I have the, the purple excited. ones in my ears, mm -hmm. uh, but I've got this clear pair here that you're seeing. Yep. And um, now I know a lot of these will pop, they will, they will come apart. And you can also add a, wire, a, a wireless version of that. Is that? So you can. So uh, I think I have my 
here somewhere around here. Let me see. I have so much sure stuff here. Okay. <laughs> so you can. So what you can do is um, they come right off. They have a MMCX connection. And we have a wireless adapter. It's called the um, secureless adapter. I think I have in this drawer. Sorry. I have so much stuff. I know the feeling. So, so it's this guy right here. Just put that there. So this is the uh, secure fit wireless adapter. This will take any sure earphone. Um, and what it does is makes your earphones wireless. Um, the great thing about these is that they are IPX4 rated. So if you wanted to, um, you know, have a jog and the and it's raining, you're fine. You don't want to dive in the pool or swim underwater, <laughs> but right. uh, they are IPX4. So they do um, will give you some uh, water resistance. They're not waterproof, just resistant. They also have something that we call environment mode. And all of our Bluetooth um, headphones and this device here will allow you to let some of the outside world in. So you yeah. guys know when you're wearing ears, mm -hmm. you can't hear anything. I mean, you literally can't hear anything else that's happening around you because they're designed for the stage. So if you've ever been to a performance and you see these singers wearing these big things or these things in their ears or drummers or any musician, it's because they are blocking out everything that's happening and only getting pumped in what they need to hear. And um, that's the beauty of an earphone is that you really get to hear what you sound like. And when you're doing a podcast or a stream or any kind of performance, the monitors that you wear will allow you to really focus on what you're saying, what you're doing. You're not over talking. You're not talking loud. It really gives you the ability to, to listen. So with that said, environment mode allows some of that noise in. So if you're jogging, you're on an airplane, you're doing your daily activity, you're not completely sealing yourself off from what's happening around you, with, which is what ears tend to do. And you'll be able to, um, you know, be aware of what's happening. And you can control the amount of environment mode on an app that we have that you can download for free on the, uh, for the earphone. It's separate from the Motive app. It's called the Sure Plus Play app. So and I actually, th this is yeah. the uh, Aonic 215 TW2s. Yep. And I actually ran the Marine Corps Marathon with this in my ear. Wow. And was listening to my playlist the whole time, and it worked like a charm. So I love, That's awesome. I love running with these, um, you know, because because like you said, they don't they don't move. I've used other stuff before, but you kind of feel like, oh, it's going to fall off my head. It's going to fall out of my ear. Yeah, it's so comfortable. Uh, you, and the and the battery life is just amazing. Uh, you know? Yeah, the uh, seven hours of battery, and then the case will actually charge the um, right. right. The unit uh, and the case holds three additional charges. So was it 32? 32, 32, right. 32, 32 hours. Right. Yeah. Um, so a lot of battery. Again, you can use different Shure earphones. So if you start with the 215s and then later on down the road, you're like, you know what? I want to try uh, an 846. <laughs> you can, they actually work. Um, what 846s are top of the line when it comes to earphones. These, for as an example, the 215s are a single driver configuration, and the 846s are a quad driver configurations. They have four drivers, and they're designed for audiophile listening. So, Chris, you probably get a kick out of those since you're the audiophile. Yeah, I'm not technically an audiophile, but Jim likes to use that word. It's a it's, it's a, a big dirty word. word. It's a dirty word. It's a dirty. Word. <laughs> well, I don't want to call just, you an audio snob. I'm just particular about how things sound. That let's let's put it that way. I, you, you have know, dog I, ears. It's, yeah, <laughs> you have dog ears. Yes, <laughs> I have dog ears. I, it's too bad my wife's not listening to this. She would find <laughs> that incredibly hilarious. Um, so I have to I have to do a replay of that. <laughs> so there are a number of other items here that we have yet to get to, uh, and and um, a couple that I that I'd love to be able to have you speak to are the Sure Aonic fifties and the Sure Aonic forty. 
Sure. Uh, we talked a little bit about headphones and you coming from Bose and, you know, coming mm-hmm. over to Shure and having that experience over at Bose. Was that a factor in, in, uh, why Shure came knocking? Um, yes and no. Um, I think, uh, you know, they were looking for the right person, um, yeah. that, you know, understood the MI world as well. Um, but, but, uh, they, we did launch our first ever wireless noise canceling headphones. Um, I, I think like within the first year that I was there. Okay. Um, and I did have a lot of knowledge, obviously with, um, Bose, you know, with, uh, with noise canceling headphones, but, um, I would say that the, the, their, you know, Bose was doing them for a long time. Um, they were the first ones to come to retail with a uh, noise canceling headphone. Um, Shure's approach is more from getting that stage and studio experience and putting that into a headphone like an Aonic 40 or Aonic 50. So it's coming from a different world. Mm. Um, so for example, um, Shure makes headphones for studio. We have a whole line of studio headphones and that's good for like tracking, mixing, mastering. Um, we have different tiers that go all the way up to five, six hundred dollars for um, our top of the line mastering um, headphones. So, you know, we knew audio, we knew how to make a really good pair of headphones, but how do you do that within a noise canceling headphone? Because mm. generally, when you make a noise canceling headphone, there's a lot of processing going on with the algorithm of the um, noise canceling itself, being right. able to shape the noise canceling around what you're actually hearing. Sometimes uh, with a lot of noise canceling headphones, um, your music or your content will come across as sort of uh, processed is, I guess, mm. the best word, maybe plastic. Yeah. Um, and uh, Sure's approach was to make sure that your audio um, or your content sounds as natural as possible. So it's taking this experience of stage studio and audio and putting them into... Um, a uh, product like a noise canceling headphone, like the Ionic 50 or 40. Yeah. So, Chris, I've got the 40s here. So, I mean, if you want to sh- show the 50s, and so this is, th- these things are extremely comfortable. I mean, I-, I could probably fall asleep in them. I mean, don't do that, Jim. I know. Not, <laughs> especially when I'm not on, on a live stream. Yeah. That, that's the other thing, too, with studio headphones, because you're in the studio for prolonged hours at a time. You know, you need something where you can wear headphones for an extended period of time. So right down to the fit and comfort, we were incorporating all of that stuff into Aonic 40. So um, we're super happy with it. Um, They sound amazing. Um, Mm -hmm. Aonic 50s have an LDAC built in, so you can do high-res streaming. Um, The Aonic 40s do not. They're strictly for on-the-go noise canceling. Where Aonic 50s, if you wanted... An audio file, being able to to stream high res files with a 50 millimeter driver, with an LDAC headphone amp, all the bells and whistles. Aonic 50 is probably the choice for you. Yeah, I love um, I love the 50s. Uh, this is what I use for to do a lot of uh, a lot of editing. Um, I would say um, the difference in the build is. I don't want to say, I would say noticeable. Um, mm-hmm. I would, these are, the 50s are heavier because a lot of people will go, what's the difference between the 50s and 40s besides the price? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's like if, if you, it, here I can just, you know, you just hold them side by side here yep. and you could just tell there's, a, there's more plastic going on over here in the 40s and there's a lot more of a, a stitch uh, leather cushion um, that is going on. They're a little heavier, um, yep. right? And these uh, these right here are very sturdy, right? It still is flexible enough for uh, for your ears. And mm-hmm. over here, um, you know, I'm not saying that it's it's still as good quality, but it's just mm-hmm. it's just different, right? There's just yeah, a, so- there's noticeable. One of the things too is that the Aonic 40s they fold inward for travel, mm-hmm. right? So you can put them in a bag. They're smaller, 
But the biggest difference between the two is going to be that LDAC. So the LDAC included in Aonic 50, but is not included in the Aonic 40. And that's going to allow you for all this high-res streaming. Mm -hmm. Um, You can actually uh, plug in a USB cable to the Aonic 50 into your laptop and and do high-resolution wired um, listening as well. So it's more designed for the sort of high-end listener, the audiophile, I guess, if you will. It's got... Um, there's that word that, again, Mark. There's Mario. that word. God. Keep using it. Uh, but that that's what the Aonic 50s are more um, geared towards, that premium noise-canceling listening experience. The premium uh, wireless noise-canceling <laughs> listening if you decide to use the noise-canceling and wireless. And like I said, a lot of these noise-canceling headphones out on the market will come across as real process. We've done our best to make sure Anak 50s are very, very natural in the music. So that's the big differentiator there. Uh, and coming from that world, listening to a bunch of different noise-canceling headphones, Anak 50s are by far uh, my top experience that I've heard, uh, definitely. Well, I think that's the other thing people don't uh, you know, need to realize is that they are you know, wireless, but you can wire it. You can plug them in and use them as you, you can not use the wireless functionality of it. Yeah. Um, and they, you know, and so I'm all, you know, I'm to the point now where Jim's got me like, you know, uh, <laughs> really worried about anything wireless, uh, whatsoever. You know, <laughs> it's like, well, what happens if the battery dies on? And I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. I need to wire this <laughs> in. So upstairs, you know, upstairs where I'm doing all my editing, I have it wired. Yeah. Uh, wired in just for that, you know, that kind of experience. Oh, yeah. Yep. Definitely. Wireless uh, uh, in streaming, wireless earphones are kind of... I have yet to experience... If I'm on a conference call and I have my... T- my uh, I call them TW2s. They're true wireless Gen 2, the secure fit adapter. If I have those in and I'm on a conference call, I think I'm fine. It, it's not that bad. But if I'm trying to stream live or I'm doing something outside of that realm, I get a lot of latency. Mm. Um, so I prefer wired when I do any kind of streaming, any kind of content creation, so I can hear things more in real time. Um, unless you know I'm on some sort of source that the connection is laser, uh, is just right on, right on key, then then I don't have that issue, but sometimes I do um, with a lot of Bluetooth stuff is that latency issue. But uh, doing content, I always like to use my wired. That's just me, though. No, I'm the same way because I have had issues in the past where going wireless with the Bluetooth, it would like something might happen and it like it cuts out and then you're trying to reconnect the Bluetooth. And Mm -hmm. I would rather be, you know, be safe than sorry. And and so like even with this... uh, uh, with these two 15s, I've got a, I think it's called a Firewire, and it's about, I think I got like six foot attached, yeah. so I could walk all over the place and oh, still nice. hear, you know, people talking, and of course, it doesn't look like I have headphones on. Uh, yeah. And, and so I think, you know, so you can give yourself that that leeway, because, right, of course, always the other funny thing is when you have a headphones plugged into something, and if you forget, you know, you can like almost, you know, rip your, your head yeah. off because you forgot, right. like, oh, <laughs> God. I know. <laughs> done that many times especially with recording sometimes <laughs> I, I forget and I'm, I'm tethered yes so uh, one other thing uh, that I thought we might touch on is the MV88 that's another okay. that's another uh, microphone that I believe is on sale yes it is okay um, and so this is when we we talk about function uh, I'd, l- I'd love taking this thing uh, when I'm going on the road. This thing is, um, this thing's killer. Let me, uh, let me pull this up and I'll let you kind of speak to it uh, a little bit here, Mario, as far as, um, I guess, use cases for this. And I'm going to, I'm going to plug this in so we can, we can hear it um, oh, nice. while, while you talk about it. Yeah. So this uh, MV88 Plus, there are two uh, versions, um, but they are the same microphone. I'll, I'll explain that. In a little bit, but it's a stereo condenser microphone. So it has three mic elements, left, right, and center. And because of that, you can manipulate the different polar patterns that the mic actually has. 
And you could do that through the Sure Plus Play app. Excuse me, the Sure Motive app. You can do that, uh, the polar pattern manipulation. So it works similar to the MV7 in terms of connecting it to it to What did you do, Chris? I can't hear. Mario, can you uh, unmute yourself? I'm not sure why it muted you. Sorry about that. Yeah, and StreamYard muted you. There we go. There we go. I was like, oh, sorry about that. Talking. How did I mute? Did I do something? No, I was. I think it was just a software issue. Sorry yeah. about that. Okay. So, um, so at what point did you stop hearing what I was saying? <laughs> Probably almost at the beginning, I think. But uh, were well, you guys going, "Hey, stop, stop"? <laughs> and I'm just like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah man." It's just in rare. case you didn't realize this, 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 uh, this was live. Um, so I've got I, I've got it plugged in here to the SurePlus Motive app, and I have it here on the monocardioid uh, function. And so the cool thing about this is it is a stereo microphone. However, I was shocked at how good it sounded as a podcast microphone. Yeah, I use it. Uh, can you guys still hear me? Okay? Yes. Yes. Everything. Okay. Next time we'll wave our arms real crazy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, uh, yeah, so I've done a few streams using uh, the MV88 Plus um, because, um, of, well, one, I want to demo the, actually the app because the, the app is actually the, the key factor here. So I like to think of the MV88 Plus as sort of Swiss Army knife uh, for different types of audio situations. And because you can change polar patterns, you can do all that stuff, it really is intuitive for whatever type of activity you are um, trying to capture, whether it's out in the field or if it's at home. Um, I use the MV88 Plus mic a lot as a drum overhead in stereo or in um, raw midside because it just, I love the way that it sounds and it's condenser too, so it has a lot of detail. Mm. But you could pick up, you can do standard uh, mono cardioid. You could do, you could control the stereo width. You can do mono bidirectional, which um, is great if you're doing like an impromptu podcast or an right. impromptu um, like interview. Like you put that mic right between two. You, ha you have to kind of both get kind of close up, yeah. you know, to each other. But yeah, I mean, there's uh, that's the other thing, you know, when we're talking about, uh, Another microphone that's very popular in the podcast world has for uh, many years has that sort of thing where you could speak to either side of yeah. one microphone. Uh, so yeah, in a pinch, you could absolutely do a do an interview without having to hand the microphone back and forth to each other, right? When that yeah. in that mono bidirectional mode. Yeah, mono bi and then monocardioid. That's your standard cardioid polar pattern. That's great for interviews great for capturing yourself. Um, and then you've got the five band EQ. So if you wanted to roll off some of the low end, if you're out in the wind, you're outside, you can yeah. roll off some of that wind frequency. Um, still has the compression there. Um, has the high pass filtering, has your limiting, has five DSP presets um, in your gain control, all that great stuff. So it's very um, intuitive, but it's also, like I said, it's the Swiss Army knife because you can, you can really change up the way the mic sounds depending on what you're trying to record and that's I think what's so unique about a mic like this is those three elements will allow you to do that and then you also have and I've got it here I'm going to bring my overhead in this is the video kit right which is also really great because it comes with the cable that it'll go straight into your iPhone right I, so I could sit here and record and then this is what we call the what the Manfrotto uh you know, tripod. So if you want to hold it like this and walk around and you can, same thing, you can change those polar patterns. Yeah. Uh, so this is a great kit for, uh, you know, using for, you know, if you want to make videos and, you know, do those things. I guess the one thing I was trying to figure out, of course, maybe I could just hold it like this is 
if I wanted to do vertical video, it would be nice if there was an adapter that would let me, you know, be flat but have the phone up and down. Uh, yeah, you can in terms of video, you can. So, one thing that I don't know if this will help. But, um, this piece back here, this right, actually screws off. Okay. And you can, it's its own, where's that up? And then you could put, you could do this, the bottom off, and then top this on here like that. Okay. Oh. So you may be able to. Right, because you, you can then kind of get that, that, that to, to, to angle, right? Yeah, for the angle. I don't think, though, the app will allow you to record in horizontal, but you may be able to do something like that. Right. So, I don't know. You could try. Yeah. Definitely worth checking out. But yeah, but it's 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 solid. I think it's, uh, you know, great, great for, uh, and especially because you, you're able to use the apps control your, but you can do video and audio, two separate apps there. You can. And you can seamlessly kind of switch between the two. Mm -hmm. So once you configure your audio on one, um, you can go right to the video app and that same audio configuration is still theirs. Right. I love that. It's a little power packed um, microphone, super versatile. Um, and uh, it's USB only, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, it's not, I don't think it's big enough to, for you to, be, to have an XLR jack in the back. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, don't let the size fool you. That thing, you know, I'm sure there's a joke in there. It's it's not how it's not how deep your sound is. It's how, no, I don't know. We're not we're not going to we're not going to make any weird, uh, weird jokes related to the, to that. But yeah, I mean, it's it's small, but it is powerful and super versatile. So if you need something that you can just take and you wanted to plug into phone yeah. or uh, computer via USB. That thing, uh, that thing rocks. Love that mic. Yeah. It's, so we it's, do have a we do have a question oh. I've got here in the in the app uh, from Phil Hill. Does Shure make a microphone set that has a receiver with one or two clip on microphones for doing content in the field? Uh, we content in the field wireless. Um, we do not. So everything in terms of a lavalier would be wired. So you would need to wire that into. However, we do have items in more of our professional audio um, area. Um, we have um, a, we have a wireless mic system, sort of ecosystem called um, Axiant. And that's the stuff that people use when they go on world tours, like the Beyonce's of the world. Mm -hmm. And within that ecosystem, there are some items that we have that will allow you to do like wireless streaming in that way. But that mm -hmm. is more for like the broadcast world mm -hmm. more of the professional audio world in terms of doing content creation, like on your phone and you're looking for like a wireless something. We, uh, the MV88 plus would be the only thing we would have in terms of something like that or we have another lavalier mic, a small one called the MVL um, that plugs right into your phone, but nothing at that level wireless. If you wanted to do wireless out in the field at the broadcast level, we have that kind of stuff, um, but uh, but nothing at this level yet. Yeah, I was no, going to say. I mean, that yeah. might be that might be something to you know uh, think about potentially in the roadmap because I could see a lot of content creators. You know, a lot of them are using their phones and are out in various places and, you know, uh, they don't have a dead cat on the, on the thing. And, and it's just yeah. all you hear is, you know, yeah. and, uh, it's just not. Um, and so I guess something that would be wireless and, you know, affordable, not, not, not so broadcast. <laughs> uh, right. you know, anytime someone uses the word broadcast, like, uh oh, <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> where's yeah. the budget? You know, right. <laughs> yeah. <Yep. laughs> Yeah, no, noted. Uh, it's, you know, we're always looking ahead for mm -hmm. new things. Um, we always listen to our customers and what they're looking for, what they want. 
And that's true. Uh, that's something that's definitely been asked of us. Well, and, and, you know, we've got some comments, too, uh, where folks really like what the MV88 has done and are, are using. And I think, you know, that in and of itself is really helping people with their audio on yeah. on their phones, it's, which has, right. you know, always been somewhat of a challenge. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, awesome stuff. I know we're, uh, we've gone long. I hope, uh, you know, we haven't uh, made you late uh, for anything, no, Mario. Man, it's but, been an you honor know, to uh, be on the DealCaster show. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Let's go another six hours. I, I mean, got I another know, hour, is, man. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. He's, going. he's on West Coast time, right? He's yeah, right. Time. I know. Um, no, I'm just getting started. Um, yeah, awesome. I, you know, and again, those that are are listening, watching uh, live or on Team Replay, uh, there are uh, pretty much everything that Sure has on sale for the holiday season is here um, in the carousel, uh, including the Sure SM7B uh, and uh, you know the SM58, uh, MV7, MV7X. Uh, you know, uh, Aonic 40, Aonic 50, uh, headphones, just a ton of great options for you. And if you have a content creator on, uh, on your holiday list, um, you, this is the time to, uh, to grab it, make sure it gets shipped to you in plenty of time. I'm sure, sure has plenty of stock, um, <laughs> uh, to get you in a, in a drone will drop it on your porch and it'll be ready for, uh, for the holiday season. And, uh, so make sure you, uh, take a look and, and Mario, this has just been great. I mean, I, I really do love it when I'm able to, you know, do a show and, uh, learn along with our audience. And today was definitely one of those days. So, sir, thank you awesome. so much for, uh, for joining us and, and, you know, giving up your valuable time to, uh, to talk nerdy shop with us. Anytime, man. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Awesome. We did some live solving for for people today, so that was always that was a lot of fun. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's been it, it, well. I went on mute weirdly and came back. I can only hear like you guys are no longer in my ears. You're coming out of my computer speaker. <laughs> so it's we're gonna the, blame it, it on it, we're gonna blame it on the software. It's that's what happens. And you just gotta roll with it. So that's right. hopefully there's no echo, but like I'm constantly adjusting my like it was perfect. And then I went on mute for some reason. Yeah. I came back. And so that's a real real world experience right there. Yeah. That's well, real that's world. well we happen. had we had the problem with the with the chat, you know, having yeah. to look at the phone for me to see what comments we were not seeing them on uh on right. screen. So hopefully that'll all be better before next week when they'll be <laughs> a lot more viewers on uh, Amazon. So I don't know what happened, right. but yeah, it's worked out great. Yeah. Well, anytime guys, and thank you both for your support. You know, I really appreciate it. And you guys are amazing. And if you're just tuning in for the first time and you're watching these guys, make sure that you follow them because they put out some great content. They just don't do products. I mean, they do all kinds of really, really interesting topics. Um, so just make sure that you take the time to follow them because they always have some great content. And I really do appreciate you guys having me on, for sure. Thank you. Thanks so much, yeah. Mario. It won't be the last. And as always, right. everyone, don't fear the gear. Thanks for listening to DealCasters. Congratulations. You've taken another step forward in your content creation journey. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe or follow button here in your favorite podcast player, so you can be reminded every time we drop an episode. We love hearing from our listeners and viewers. And if you're wanting to watch our shows live on Amazon, feel free to follow DealCasters Live as well at dealcasters.live. Follow us on Twitter or subscribe to our YouTube channel where we also included added content that you cannot find anywhere else. If you have questions about this episode or have something you want us to review, you can also email us at dealcasters at dealcasters.live. Thanks again for listening, and you know the deal. Don't fear the gear.